and today we're going to continue with latent curve models. We're going to extend uh, the example that we looked at last time. We're, we're going to extend it in a number of ways. We're going to look at adding covariates to the model, covariates uh, that can explain changes in the latent intercept and slope, uh, which are sometimes called time invariant covariates. Uh, you also can have covariates that help to predict that are independent variables predicting the values of the uh, the predicted the the predicted variable in the time periods. Uh, but we're not going to do that today. So we're going to extend this. Uh, we'll add some. We'll add a categorical covariate state, and then we'll add a numerical one, po poverty level, and then we'll add a third covariate, which will be the interaction of those two as they help to predict the latent intercept and latent slope in uh, crime data. Now, uh, also, we've been looking in our model, we've uh, used one prototypical way to represent uh, the the um, influences of both the intercept, that is the means on the time periods and the slope, that is the rate of change on the time periods. We'll look at alternative ways that you can define or specify, if you will, the latent intercept and slope uh, depending on the particular circumstances of your study, of course. And then we'll get into, we'll look at how you can also incorporate uh, group differences in a in a latent curve model, uh, which was actually the exercise from seven. So we'll we'll put that off until that'll be at the end. Okay. So uh, in order to do this, just to jog everybody's memory, we're going to have a quick review of what we did last time, uh, because actually we're using that as a, a platform to 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 examine these extensions to that example. Okay. So Growth models are time-based. They're not. They are longitudinal. They're not the same as mixed effects, which is another very popular um, implementation, both in structural equation modeling and in multiple regression. But you have available to you in the model itself. Here, let's go back to our slides quickly. Here's the original one. You can model a latent curve model with uh, either explicit means or without explicit means. We've been doing it without explicit means, where at, where the we we postulate or we hypothesize a latent variable, which we say is the intercept, which affects the mean levels of the uh, predicted variable in four in our case four different time periods. The, that's what the dashed line means, that uh, the influence of the intercept on each of the four different time periods is, is considered, assumed to be consistent. We're using the value of one, which just means the mean is the same in each time period. And then also the slope, where the slope, uh, it's a latent slope, but what the latent slope reflects is it has an influence. There's some underlying rate of change influence among in our case, the uh, the crime rate in these various communities in New York and Pennsylvania measured at these four time periods. And typically, the slope is regarded as changing. And if the, uh, if the time periods are equidistant, the data collection periods are equidistant, a typical convention is to model them as 0, 1, 2, and 3. That is the influence of the slope on the observed values of the predicted variable, which is crime rate data in the four time periods. Now, the intercept and slope, you can model these just like you can constrain these, just like any other uh, free free parameter, free free parameter that you're you want to estimate. You can fix them to a certain level by simply not allowing any variance, or you can allow them to vary by, um, in which case you'll get an estimate for the variance. 
If you estimate both an intercept and a slope, a latent intercept and a latent slope, we need to be clear about this. They're round, they're latent. Okay, if, if we suggest, if we specify a model where we have, where we allow the variance of both the latent intercept and the latent slope, then that also permits the model to estimate the covariance, that is how they move in relation to each other, which can provide more insight into, into the, uh, the effects or the rates of change, the relationships between the intercepts and the rates of change on your predicted variables across these four time periods. Okay, so that's that's the basic model we've been using. Note these are error terms. Whenever anything is predicted, these are the manifest variables. And we just, we're calling them time one, time two, time three, and time four, but actually the measure is not when it happened. The measure is the, the crime rate. And whenever you have a, a predicted variable or an exogenous variable, uh, typically, or always, there's some amount of error, which is the difference between the predicted level and the observed level. So that's that's what these things are. Okay, so that that's our basic model. Now we're going to add. We we've seen all this before, so let's go over to here. We're going to add. Um, we're just going to use the the time invariant covariates. We're going to use, as I mentioned, we're going to use sp state which has two levels, Pennsylvania and New York, and it's categorical. Uh, note we are suggesting uh, multiple indicators, uh, multiple, uh, can't remember what it, is, what it stands for, but what it means is you have more than one indicators that is predicting both the intercept and the slope. Okay, and these are time invariant, which means the influence on the intercept of both state We'll use state, we'll use poverty, and we'll also use the interaction of the two. When you use the interaction, of course, you don't care about the main effects. So we're just showing two at most here. But they, they both are uh, predictors for both the latent intercept and the latent slope. That's why it's a mimic model. And then, of course, if you have two uh, covariates, you can, you can measure the covariance between them as well. This is time invariant. Note you can explicitly still model the uh, covariance between the latent intercept and the latent slope. This is the time varying coordinates. Now, whether it's time invariant, uh, whether it doesn't change, it's fixed over time, or whether it does vary over time, really depends on the nature of the covariate. But let's just talk about the model. So. C1, C2, C3, C4, this could be just one covariate such as uh, age. Age is a variable that by its nature can change over time or weight. Weight is a variable or GPA is a variable that can change over these time periods. Uh, on the, on the, in contrast, state obviously is invariant. It does, it's going to be the same every time. Uh, poverty le poverty level within community, uh, actually it could change a little bit, I guess, but we are modeling it and nevertheless as um, an invariant covariate. Okay, so this is the schematic model. We didn't spend much time on the on the notation, and really that's because I really like to have hands-on, um, instruction. It's, I think it's useful to people, but also I like to do it so we can cover more ground. Perhaps in the future, if I get a chance to um, make this course a little longer, we'll use a few sessions up front just to talk about the, the notation, which is important. Uh, the structural equation, you know, co covariance based SAM really, I appreciate um, the flexibility. There are things you can do with with SEM, with covariance-based SEM, uh, like Levon, that you, you can't do with PLS path modeling. Now, Levon is not fully mature yet. Um, there's a lot of things you can't do. Multi-level modeling is, dif is difficult. It can be done with Levon, but it's difficult. Um, you cannot, within the model itself, you cannot specify an interaction. You have to create the interaction term outside of the model in your data set. Um, M plus, I believe, is a much more mature 
covariance-based modeling tool. I, you can do a lot of different, a lot of other things in M+. But let, let's move on. Okay, so there we are.